future-proofing solar PV savings with energy storage. So this video is going to be all about how to set up and model using energy storage to hedge against future rate changes. And this video here is part of a new energy storage video tutorial series we're launching where we're going to be deep diving into specific topics within modeling energy storage projects. Here's the agenda and start times for this video in case you want to skip ahead. So we're basically going to do a quick overview to start with, then run through the steps for setting up and modeling this type of analysis, and then spend the rest of our time in the case study portion. So I want to start by overviewing this concept of using energy storage to future-proof solar savings. So number one, we know for certain that utility rates and net metering frameworks all over the country are changing. In the last quarter alone, which was Q3 2017, 41 states took some action related to distributed energy solar policy or rate design, according to the 50 states of solar report that the NC Clean Energy Center puts out. So we know for sure that change is happening. Um, number two, there are all different types of changes being proposed and implemented, depending on the state and the utility, and utility territory. So on the rate design side, we're going to look at some really radical time of use changes in our case study in a minute. Um, you have demand charge changes. You have customers being forced onto solar-specific tariffs. Uh, on the net metering side, there's a whole different set of changes where basically exported energy to the grid is getting valued at some discounted rate. And there are other types of changes within there, like how the utility determines the true-up period. So this brings us to number three, which is the one general commonality that most all of these changes share is that they typically erode the savings of customer sited solar. So in other words, these changes are reducing the avoided cost that solar can achieve, which eats into the value proposition of solar. And this video is really all about how energy storage can get paired with PV to help limit that erosion of savings and kind of act as a hedge against any future type of rate change. So one of the best features of storage is its versatility and the ability to hedge against all different types of changes. And that's kind of how we use this term future proof solar savings. And really this is an awesome selling point for developers out there um, when pairing storage with PV projects. And then the last thing I want to mention is the timing of changes. Um, when you attempt to quantify how much savings storage can preserve, there's basically three buckets here. Uh, there are implemented changes that have already gone into effect. There are scheduled changes that we know are going to go into effect. And then there are future changes, which we just don't know anything about yet. And storage can help mitigate all three of these types and timing of changes. All right, before we dive into the case studies, let's quickly overview the steps to set up and model this analysis. So the goal here is to basically solve for two things. Number one, how much will a customer's savings get eroded by a rate change? And then number two, how much of that can storage preserve? So the steps on the screen here assume that we're doing this analysis for a future or upcoming rate change that hasn't yet gone into effect. So number one, we're going to quantify savings or the avoided cost from solar that a customer can achieve on their current rates. Then number two, we're going to run and quantify savings and avoided cost that customer can achieve on those future rates that are going to be going into effect. Uh, number three, the difference between those two is the erosion of savings. And then lastly, number four, we're going to try and determine if we added storage, how much of those eroded savings can we preserve? Now, this probably sounds more complicated than it needs to be, because if a rate change has already gone into effect, then basically we're just going to skip right down to step four and figure out how much savings storage can achieve for that customer based on their current rate. So the first case study we're going to look at is for a rate design change. In our example here, we're going to look at the recent time of use changes that San Diego Gas and Electric just implemented as of December 1, 2017. So these changes are radical and have been causing a pretty big stir in the solar developer community down in San Diego because of the negative effect on the value of solar. So I've got a summary table on the screen here, old rates versus new rates. And as you can see, there are a number of different changes happening concurrently. 
So the most publicized and damaging change is in the on-peak summer period, which is the most expensive energy, moving significantly later in the evening. It's going from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., shifting all the way out to 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Now, notice there are other changes as well. Uh, you can see the seasons are changing. The summer is actually going from six months down to five months. The on-peak period, which used to be weekdays only, is now moving to a seven-day week. And then also notice the winter and summer time of use windows are now defined the same on the new rates, whereas they used to be defined differently on the old rates. So obviously, lots of different changes to make sense of here and figuring out how much this erodes a customer's savings from solar is going to be highly dependent on the shape of the customer's load profile. Okay, now let's look visually at these time of use window changes. On the screen here, I'm comparing a summer weekday for the SDG&E DRSES rate, uh, old versus new. And you can really visually see how much later in the evening that on-peak period is shifting. Under the old rates, Solar used to get valued at 50 cents a kilowatt hour during the 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on peak period, which was very advantageous. But now that the premium priced on peak time of use window has moved all the way out to 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., the value of that afternoon solar production is getting cut in half for this particular schedule from over 50 cents a kilowatt hour to about 25 cents a kilowatt hour. So this is obviously going to significantly erode the value of solar or avoided cost of power calculation when you add up the effect of this over the course of a full year. All right, now let's model an actual project in the sdg &E territory. So to determine how much the avoided cost or value of solar gets eroded, we need to start by calculating what the avoided cost was on the old November 2017 rates and then the avoided cost on the new December 2017 rates. So to make this easy and really see the erosion of savings side by side here, you can see that I set up two separate facilities, uh, both of which have identical usage. So let's go into step two. And to give a little bit of context for what I set up in this case study, um, we're going to be looking at a commercial project. Uh, the SDG&E customer was on the ALTOU rate and is moving to the DGR rate. The customer has usage of 25,000 kilowatt hours a month or 300,000 kilowatt hours a year. And then you can see I sized 175 kW DC rated solar PV system that's offsetting about 84% of annual kilowatt hour consumption. So also quick note, both the ALTOU rate and the DGR rate have that same on-peak TOU window shift that we looked at a minute ago going from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., shifting to 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. So we can see here in step two for the first facility, we're going from the 2017 ALTOU rate to the November 2017 DGR rate. And you can already anticipate what's the next facility. Uh, we're going from the tw November 2017 ALTOU rate to the December 2017 DGR rate. Okay, so now we can open up the facilities dashboard down on bottom and interpret our results. So notice the before solar bill was the same in both cases, 72,970. Now on the November 2017 rates, our avoided cost was $55,021 or 21.8 cents per kilowatt hour, expressing it in dollar per kilowatt hour terms. On facility two, assuming the customer is forced onto those new December 2017 rates, our avoided cost drops down to 42,130, or 16.7 cents a kilowatt hour. So you can see here our avoided cost is getting eroded by about 13 grand. And in percentage terms, this, this uh, equates to a 23% erosion in savings as a result of being forced onto those new December 2017 TOU rates. Let's take a really quick look at the demand profile visualization screen within our ETB analytics module. And what I want to do is zoom into one week here in the summer. And this is facility one. So this is the November 2017 DGR rate. And you can really visually see there when the window is defined from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
a lot of that solar production is getting valued at, in this case, 43 cents a kilowatt hour, that premium on peak rate. Whereas when we toggle to the December 2017 DGR rate, let's go back to that exact same week. And let me just filter out the 2017 DGR energy cost. Now that the window is defined from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., you can really just visually see how much less solar production is getting captured in that window. And instead of getting that premium 56 cent per kilowatt hour price, a lot of that production, that midday production, is getting value closer to 23 cents a kilowatt hour. So this is what's really driving that erosion in savings. And I like looking at it visually. Uh, and again, for this customer, over the course of the full year, it came out to be a 23% erosion in savings. Before we move on to adding a storage system to this analysis to determine how much of those eroded savings we can preserve, I want to quickly mention another way of setting up this analysis. And this time, we're going to be assuming that the rate change already went into effect. Okay, so today is December 20th, 2017, as I'm recording this. And the sdg &E rate change that we've been talking about already went into effect. So therefore, to accurately determine what this customer's avoided cost from solar would be, I should just be using the December 2017 ALTOU rate and the December 2017 DGR rate. So again, if you were modeling a project today for a customer, who is considering going solar, let's say in the near future. The November 2017 rates that we were just talking about are irrelevant now. All that really matters is our reality today. And our reality today is the December 2017 rates. So it doesn't make sense to talk about the erosion and savings that just happened. So that's kind of why I mentioned earlier that the timing of the rate change is gonna dictate how you set up this analysis. In our last example, if it's an upcoming rate change that's scheduled to go into effect, you know, then it makes sense to look at things in terms of how much our savings is going to get eroded. But if it's a rate change that already got implemented, all that matters now is the customer's current reality. And that's really what we're looking at here, December 2017 versus December 2017. Okay, so now comes the fun part where we're going to add in a storage system to figure out how much savings we can preserve. So I'm back in the first example where we looked at how much savings got eroded. And remember, it was about 13,000 bucks or 23% of those savings got eroded being forced onto the new December 2017 DGR rate. Okay, let's go to step five where I've already set up a storage system. And you can see I'm using pretty reasonable assumptions here. We're going to do a 30 kW, 30 kWh storage system, 100% max depth of discharge, and a 90% round trip efficiency. And the control settings instructions I gave the simulation engine are must charge from solar PV, and let's run time of use arbitrage only, because really we're trying to isolate the preservation of savings from that rate change, which are really all driven by the time of use windows moving later. So we ran the storage simulation and let's go right to the bottom line here and look at what our dollar savings from storage was. And you can see for this specific customer, you know, based on their load profile and the solar system and the storage system, and of course the fact that they're forced onto that new December 2017 DGR rate, our simulation determined we're able to save $78 per kilowatt hour. And that equates to $2,340 of avoided cost from storage alone. So not bad for a relatively modestly sized battery in this example here. All right, now let's take a quick look at the visualization of that simulation we just ran and really see how this storage system here is future-proofing solar savings for this customer. So as you can see, we're looking at the June-July billing period. I'm going to zoom into one week and we can see that we're discharging the entire duration of that battery in the 56 cent per kilowatt hour on peak period, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then you can see we are doing our recharging of that battery during the mid peak 23 cent per kilowatt hour window. Because remember, we set that requirement that said must charge storage from PV. 
Uh, so if we didn't set that requirement, we could have squeezed even a little more savings out of this project uh, by charging in the off-peak period down at 16 and a half cents. But I'm trying to use real-world conservative assumptions in the model here. Okay, so going back to our original question, which is how much savings can storage preserve? As we just saw in this case study, that answer is obviously going to be dependent on the size of the battery. So for this example here, the 30KW, 30KWH storage system can preserve $2,340 of savings that got eroded. Now, if we sized a larger battery or a longer duration battery, we could obviously save more. But what I want to do next is to kind of throw a little curveball into the mix here. And I want to look at what happens if we keep the same identical sized storage system, but we change the control settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn on peak demand shaving in addition to TOU arbitrage. So generally for CNI applications, peak demand shaving offers the bigger savings opportunity. So we're going to rerun this simulation. And the question we're now asking is, well, for the same size system, how much more savings can we squeeze out by simply changing the way we program the battery to operate? And here's our answer. So the answer is our savings from storage alone jumps all the way up to $142 a kilowatt hour, which equates to $4,260 a year, which is almost a doubling of our savings from storage when we were just doing the time of use arbitrage piece. So to quickly recap a couple key points, the timing of the change matters. If we're trying to run this analysis for an upcoming or scheduled rate change, then it makes sense to determine what the erosion of savings is first. If we're running this analysis for a rate change that already got implemented, then we're really just trying to solve for how much storage can save. Either way, determining the avoided cost that storage can achieve is going to depend on the size of the battery and the duration of the battery and also the storage control settings and the value streams that the storage system is targeting. Okay, so this concludes our energy storage video tutorial. Hopefully this video gives you good direction on how to set up and run this type of analysis. The big takeaways here are that rates are changing and NEM frameworks are changing and this is eroding the economics of solar. And this trend will continue. You know, in California alone, both PG&E and SoCal Edison have very similar proposals to SDG&E where the on-peak window is getting shifted to much later in the evening. And it is likely that these will get adopted in 2018. So this is a big deal. And this affects all solar customers, whether it's CNI or residential. Uh, the good news is that storage is very versatile to be able to future-proof solar savings from different types of changes, as we just looked at. And many smart solar developers have realized this and are now framing this as a key selling point today when they're pairing storage with solar on projects.